I would end up, you know, waking up late and not wanting to go to that class because it was my first period class. And so I'd be late to school. I'd miss, you know, the first five, ten minutes. And he just made me feel like it was a drudgery. I didn't want to go there to learn. I felt like my mind couldn't even process the information. And I was just thinking, you know, what is it that I'm doing? Is it, you know, my shirt? Are my shirts too tight? Or are my, you know, shorts too short? And I started just wearing t-shirts and just baggy sweatpants. And I mean, I was just not motivated at all. Male victims are often overlooked because of society's gender roles. Boys often feel expected to be tough and aggressive in male-female relations. The negative impact of sexual harassment on boys is also often enhanced when no one believes or reacts to their complaints. They are often viewed as the probable harasser and not the victim, but that is not always the case. Boys can be sexually harassed in the same ways that girls can. There aren't many differences. They can be touched inappropriately just like girls. They may have comments made towards them, sexually inappropriate, whistling, anything that girls go through, the boys do as well. We just don't hear about it as much with the young men. Whether it's a sexual comment or rumor or excessive pressure to do something sexual, the line is crossed all too frequently in schools everywhere. Many students are too scared or embarrassed to report they've been victims of sexual harassment. The line between appropriate and inappropriate behavior can be blurry. If someone's verbal, physical, or visual behavior makes you feel uncomfortable or unsafe, the line has been crossed. Why do some people cross it? For many harassers, their actions fulfill a need for feeling power over another person. Why is this teacher whispering in her ear? He's also inviting her to his house after school so he can help her get an A in his class. That blurry line just got crossed.